Hello beautiful people, you guys asked for it and here I am delivering. Welcome to the step-by-step -step guide on how to go from a C or a D to an A or an A star in A level maths in one week. <laughs> I started these guides with, you know, one month to your exams, then less than a month and then a week and a few days. But I'm not going to say the extra days because it doesn't look good in the title. But um, yeah, so everything I'm going to say here, it's very niche to a, a certain target. Um, population so if you're on an A or a B and you want to get you know an A star and stuff then look at that video that I have on my channel it should be the third guide I've um, uploaded recently so look at that one but this is very targeted to people who are actually on low grades and they're like flip what do I do so this is that video um, I got an A star last year in maths so I put myself in your shoes and thought to myself what would I do if I was on a low grade all in the intention and purpose of increasing my marks ASAP because you don't have time. We, we, we both know this, you don't have time. So let's just do as much as we can, but do it in a smart manner, not just revising whatever just comes up in your head. No, picking exactly what to revise so that you can increase marks. So as always, these videos can be used by anyone in whatever exam board. But let's say the majority takes Edexcel and you're on a C and you need an A for your uni offer. You would need to increase your marks by 75 if you were already on that C mark, okay? So a C is around 50% and an A, <laughs> tongue twister, um, is 65%. So question is, where are you going to get that 75 marks from? And you also might be thinking like, oh, I'm so overwhelmed, I don't get it. And the worst feeling actually is when you're doing math questions, you don't get it. And you, you actually want to start crying because you're so frustrated. But hopefully from what I'm going to tell you, you'll be able to streamline your approach. And just with maths, I need you to listen. The biggest mindset I have for you right now is go into tunnel vision. Don't look left. Don't look right. Just look forward. That's all I want you to do. Okay. So. Here are the steps. One, identify what skills you need to work on. Two, learn how to do the skills. Three, isolate the topic slash skills and work on them. And then four, pass papers, okay? So number one, identify what skills you need to work on. This is not you doing the questions. This is you just priming your brain and thinking, okay, what do I not know? Of course, you know some stuff, like you, you can give yourself credit for that. But um, there might be other things that you don't know. For example, you might not know how to approach modulus graphs. You might not know how to do differentiation. You might not know how to do um, like solving trig, for example. Or you might be struggling on modelling questions, right? So just go through a past paper, take a screenshot or just note down what questions that um, you would anticipate, okay, anticipate, that's the key word, uh, to struggle on. So once you've identified what it is, then you can start working on it. Listen, maths is a skills test. I don't want, I don't care what anybody else tells me. It's literally, you learn the skill, let's say, um, I don't know, which question should I pick? Let's say, okay, let's say this trig one. You learn how trig functions are. You learn about how you can solve them and you learn about how to get the actual, you know, theta values within the range those things i just said are skills that it's not an essay it's a skill so that's why people say like oh if you want to get better at something to keep doing more practice on it because it's a skill-based test that is a level maths for you and the, the quicker you realize and understand that concept the faster you'll be able to progress because you know that with maths, the topics are basically isolated. Yeah, there's fundamental principles of like basic algebra and stuff that underpins all of them. But you're not going to be using modular skills in a question on um, projectiles, are you? Do you get it? They're separate. So I would say make a, like a document. Um, well, this is kind of in step two, but make a document and write loose steps on like what you would do and how you would approach, let's say... Um, sigma notation questions or projectile questions and as i said here maths exam questions are majority majority i can't even say that word anymore it's basically based on repeating skills for each question unless it's modeling then that combines a few other topics to it um and i haven't mentioned this already but you might 
I can even anticipate the comments right now. It's like, I don't know how to balance people one, two, and three. I don't know what to do. Think about it logically. Paper one and paper two is pure. Paper three is stats and mechanics. Pure covers 200 marks out of 300. If you are in a low grade, put stats and mechanics to the side. Only focus on pure. And then once you finish your paper two pure exam, then start doing stats and mechanics. Because more marks is in pure. And you need to get somehow 75 marks higher than what you normally do. So that's what I would recommend. Okay, leave stats and mechanics until you finish paper two. Cool. Now, step two, learn how to do the skill. Okay, so um, loads of people have actually been emailing, emailing me about like advice and stuff. And the common thing that underpins all of them is that like, oh, I've been using the textbook, but I just don't know how to answer the exam questions. Like, I'm struggling. Yeah, of course you're struggling. Because the, the textbook, oh, if you guys are still using the textbook to revise, something has gone wrong severely wrong i'm such a i'm a hater against the textbook it's great when you're in the lessons yeah in the lessons but the moment you step out of the classroom you do not touch that textbook because they are not exam questions they are not in the same type of what's the word same vibe of the exam either they're significantly easier than what you get in the papers and no wonder why you're struggling no wonder why you can't do the papers. So please, for the love of God, do not touch your textbooks from this point on, okay? So then you might be thinking, what well, then, okay, if I don't look at the textbook, then how am I going to learn how to do it? Well, I mean, don't do the exam questions that aren't in the textbook, but you can look at the explanation, that's fine. Personally, if I was you, I would want to increase <laughs> my ability to learn. And what better than to do it on YouTube? Like, hello, you're watching this video on here, like clearly it's it's a very beneficial site and so just search up whatever topic you want to go on um as in revise let's say it's um i don't know uh integration right just search up integration and excel a level maths and then watch all the videos that come up this is just a, one example of the plethora of channels there are out there so there's this there's mr asprey buy some maths so so many but i just put this on here because zishan's just so funny <laughs> i love him <laughs> um yeah so if you just look again with those channels i also mentioned they have a similar concept to this so you, let's say you're struggling with integration just watch the playlist he has a proper exam questions uh, in his videos so then it's kind of like a two-in-one isn't it for learning and you can see the exact vibe that the question is going to come up in so that's what I would do about learning how to do the skill. And again, remember, it's step two for a reason. Because in step one, you had identified what you need to work on. Now this is now oh, the action of learning it. Cool. And then step three, isolate the topic slash skills and work on them. Notice how I haven't said past papers yet. That's going to be in step four. As I said before as well, <laughs> um, maths is just skill-based. So just get one topic, let's say you want to work on trig, do all the exam questions you can find on it until you get like above 90% accuracy and then move on to the next topic. Or if you want to compromise, you can compromise for about 70% accuracy, but alas, whatever you want to decide. Um, so that's why you can afford to actually just isolate the topics and just do them because that's how they come up in the exams anyways. So these are three uh, websites that you can use. Well, this is PMT. You guys should probably have known the format. But we have Naked Maths. And I say this first. Um, Naked Maths exam questions are good. But they're easier. So if you're starting with Mr. Madoni or PMT questions. You're struggling with them. You're like, flip, I don't know what to do then maybe go on to Nika Maths, do those exam questions. As I said, they're easier. They're not the best. But if you just can't do it, then you need to start from fundamentals. So you would need to start from Nika and then move on to Mr. Madoni and PMT questions ASAP. Um, yeah. And Mr. Madoni, gosh, 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 love this website. This is so slept on. Like, nobody's ever said it. Me and my friend found it and... Phew, We've never turned our backs on it. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> so Mr. Madoni, search this up on um, Google. He basically has 
these are like headings press on to a level then he has all the exam questions like booklets essentially google documents really uh, for each topic in as and a2 and this is just an example of when i pressed um, measure of location and spread of spread and representations so he has video tutorials okay and then he has exam questions and my god they are good they are very good very very good and there's loads of them so definitely use mr madoni 100 percent. okay and then you know after you finish that go on to pmt do the questions and you'll be sorted again you need to understand that maths questions aren't that hard in a way trust me let me let me say my sentence <laughs> um they're not hard because there isn't many variations to it that's why it's not hard because once let's say you learn how to do modulus well there's only a few set of like dare i say types that modulus questions can appear in the papers so it's not like you're gonna learn modulus now and in the exam they're gonna use modulus skills in a completely atrocious and unbelievable way no it's not going to be like that they can do that in bio but not in math so you know we can take um take assurance in that but as i said here as you do lots of these um questions you start to see patterns and you can be able to answer it more easily aim is pattern recognition essentially so that's step three and then step four well hello past papers yeah get onto this asap but um do step one to three is before that i would say because at the same time you're kind of tackling past papers as well but it's just you're not doing it doing all these different topics in one paper you're just isolating them but definitely before your exam starts at least three days before remember i'm talking to a very niche population that who are literally on c's and d's maybe start the past papers then if you haven't worked on one two and three already because there's no point genuinely doing a past paper opening up and thinking uh <laughs> how do i do this that's why this comes as step four okay more exam questions you do the more improvement you will see perfect you're going to get marks okay so that's the four steps and of course this is not my video without doing a little bit on mindset talk um yeah the mindset for <laughs> for this is very simple i am on job that's it. You need to have tunnel vision. Just keep going forward. Do not look anywhere else. Do not look behind you, above you, side to side. I don't care. You look forward. You are on job because it's so, so easy to start crying, getting frustrated, to start feeling unbelievably overwhelmed from the sheer amount that you don't know and you can't do. So just tell yourself, I am on job. I'm just going to work on everything, you know, step by step okay step by step not you're not trying to leap you're not running you're trying to walk because that's the only way that you can really solidify your skills at the moment okay and just a little tip for in the exam and when you do your practice you need to show all your workings out and do not skip anything as in steps because a it will lead to silly errors b you might end up with the wrong answer but they will give you marks for your working out so we're trying to <laughs> we're trying to <laughs> grab marks from the air so definitely um show all your workings out and well i know it's a lot but i know that you can do it <laughs> it's such a funny image but you can do it you you know you wouldn't be in this position if you won't be able to do it you know you wouldn't be given this test of life if you couldn't do it i know you can so just just keep going forward just keep swimming essentially topic by topic skill by skill and then you will not be the same person as you was or as you were from this point and this time that you're watching this video well that's the goal anyways and yeah i really really do hope that this was beneficial for you and i really do hope that you can take these steps on board and actually implement them and you can tell me like oh you're amazing thank you so much you know i love to hear that but no genuinely put all your doubts aside and just keep going forward. That's all you can do. Don't think about, oh, I should have done this earlier. Da, da, da. I don't want to hear it. No excuses from now on. They're banned. Just keep going forward. Cool. So that is the end of the video. Um, you know, comment down below 
what you're going to do per day. You know, you guys can keep yourself account uh, accountable amongst yourselves. If you need, need any advice, also uh, comment down below. Uh, make sure to subscribe as well, please. <laughs> and um, yeah, best of luck. And also, uh, comment down what sort of videos you want to see as well. If there's any other type of guides that you want to see before the exams. Cool. Keep it stepping, guys. Keep going forward. And I shall see you in the next one. Bye.